and welcome to the LGBTQ Review, where every week we look at some LGBTQIA plus content and review it a bit, talk about it a lot. This week, as part of our Christmas series, we're looking at Let It Snow. I forgot to say that we're James and Beth again. We're James and Beth. This place is beautiful. It's like the perfect holiday card. Snow hides a lot. It's like the space of weather. You can do a lot worse than this place, trust me. Tell her that you like her. And I've noticed since I was five years old, it's not that easy. You just have to tell her you want the same relationship plus boning. Tobin! Hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm up good. See you downstairs when you found a bra. Slept on my Christmas Eve bash. Come one, come all. Boom. He's gonna break up with me. He would have to be the dumbest human being on earth to do that. Like, dumber than the people who blow on ice cream before they eat it. That girl and I have a thing. Have you ever been with someone and you stay up until like 4 a.m. just talking about everything and you're just like, I can't believe I get to exist at the same time as you? No, but like, I'm really happy for you. Let It Snow is a 2019 American Christmas rom-com directed by Luke Snellin from the screenplay by Kay Cannon, Victoria Strauss and Laura Salone, based on the young adult novel of the same name by Maureen Johnson, John Green and Lauren Miracle. The novel is a fix-up novel, which means it's made up of several short stories that come together in one novel. The book was called Let It Snow, Three Holiday Romances. Unlike the film, it didn't have any LGBTQ story, so that was added for the film, which is the story between Dory and Kerry. What do you think of multiple stories in one book format? I really like it. I really like collaborative writing. I think it can be really interesting and engaging. If one bit doesn't speak to you, then there's a possibility that all those other bits are going to, which is really nice. One of the reasons I struggle with reading, especially when I was younger, is the sheer volume of it. So having like mm. stories definitely yeah. you know, if you were like me in that kind of way. And also it gives it a, like a variety taste and you can have far more representation. You can put something in there that people don't necessarily search for, you know, go out of their way to find. I really enjoyed the writing and some of the lines are so good. Snow hides a lot. It's like the spanks of weather. Great line. They really managed to avoid a lot of cliches in the writing and like kind of flip us on its head. Not only is it not a cliche, but it's like really good writing or really strong character development and stuff. It's a film that follows three different romance on Christmas Eve who all end up in Waffle... What's the place called? Sorry. Waffle House? No. Waffle Town. Waffle... No. Anyway, so they all end up in Waffle Town where some of them work as well. One is about a girl who meets like a very famous pop star on a train and the train breaks down and they're like, I'm going to go home because it's just over there and he's like... I'm going to get to that restaurant. And then they both walk to Waffle Town. As their life is just a bunch of stuff you can't control. But is that a bad thing? Anything can happen. Anything. <laughs> the second story is Dory and Kerry. Dory works in the Waffle Town and Kerry comes in with a group of friends and they don't know that she is gay. So essentially like blanks Dory when she comes over and is like really excited to see her. And their whole story is that conflict. And at the end, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. We're not telling people the end of films. And then the third one is the two best friends, Tobin and Angie, aka the Duke, and they're kind of... <laughs> and they go on a four different parties. I mean, they only get to one other party, but they talk about passing a lot. So I, I wouldn't count that as a tour. Before I read all the stuff, I would have described it more like Love Actually, where there's lots of the intertwining stories all builds to this one thing. In this case, it's the party at Waffle Town. Love Actually is a good comparison, but I also think it's a lot better than Love Actually. It's fine, it's fine. This is the kind of film that I wish Love Actually was. It tries to achieve the same thing, but this has just done so much better. I think things with multiple writers are generally elevated because there's several different perspectives on it. Uh, Julie the car? Yeah, Joan Cusack. Everybody's favourite? Cusack. 
the Duke is played by Kiernan Shipka. Sabrina is a teenage witch, and she's also in Mad Men. Julie is played by Isabella Mona, who was Dora the Explorer in the live-action movie. Dora is played by Liv Houston, who is in the Santa Clara Diet, and they write good stuff. Look him up. Addie is played by Odja Rush from... Dumpling and the Giver. Kerry's played by Anne Akina, who's a YouTuber. Tobin is played by Mitchell Hope. Stuart's played by Shamik Moore. Keon is played by Jacob Batalon, who does a host of Marvel Universe voice stuff. And also Mason Gooding is there for like five seconds. It's like a really solid cast. Yeah, great cast. Julie's mum and grandfather as well they were good the Mick Jagger scene's very fun you know who else was good Miles Robbins as Billy guy in charge at the waffle place he's Susan Sarandon's son I, I really like him I was worried when I first saw him on screen because he seemed like a character that I have seen in lots of American films before I don't quite know what character that is like trope but I guess easygoing slacker maybe but yeah he was great the more I think about this film the more like Empire Records it is those are the two films I thought of when I was watching it, actually Empire Records and Love Actually there was a the, the scene with Angie and Tobin they're in the church and they've just done the musical number and he leaves because he's like doesn't want to see them together you never felt like you were ahead of the characters at all yeah like sometimes it's just very frustrating to watch that kind of relationship on screen when two characters are like not communicating and you're waiting for them to mm. together i think the queer storyline feels the least thought through but especially with the way that it's tied up possibly the one that feels like it has the least stakes because it's just in that one location. They have like two or three scenes together. The others seem far more like grandiose. Maybe it's because they get to like move about a lot. It feels a bit smaller, unfortunately. Tobin and the Duke get a backstory. Julie and Stuart get a meet you, and mm. then they get We Hooked Up Once, which yeah. I appreciate. I think it's a positive thing to see in a film, mm. but also it just adds to the like, lacklustre feeling of their storyline. It feels kind of a one or two steps up from the gay best friend story that you would get in like a rom-com. Yeah, it does feel like the story is about Dory and Addie and Dory was like the gay best friend and then they suddenly just made her the main character of that story but then didn't really think through the other bit of the story. Because also, even Addie's, she's insecure about Mason Gooding. That doesn't feel like a whole story either. I think a pig is such a big commitment as well. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that's a great thing to put in a film. I think it's such a great film for like an ensemble, juggling all those characters and making them interesting. Okay, some don't get as much to do, or like there are some bits that are like let down, but this might make my top Christmas list. We talked about this last time, but top films. Christmas. This is a really, really good one. And also, again, I like it that it's not, it's got some silly Christmas spirit magic at the end, which I'm not that into, but it doesn't get stuck in that sickening Christmas vibe. I think, I think it's, it's good as well because they're like normal kids. You know, Book Smart has the, not that it's a Christmas film, but the tendency to focus on the wealthiest young mm -hmm. people, whereas this has got a lot of different people in it. And a lot of the focus is on the employees of the Waffle House, which is pretty good. I enjoyed that. And it feels much more like what it felt like to be a teenager. It wasn't like this thing of like people like, oh, I'm so desperate to get out of this like dead end town or like, oh, I hate working here. It's just like so rubbish. And that all these rich kids come and to like shame me because I work at the Waffle House type thing. I think, yeah, this and the half of it are good, solid films and queer representation films. Mm. Good work, Netflix. So I'll rate this film. 4.7 bleeding nipples. I will rate it 4.8 Christmas pigs. With hats on. I like the Christmas pig hat. You have been watching the LGBTQ review. We have been James and Beth. And this has been our Christmas review of Let It Snow. And make sure you like and subscribe. You can follow us on Twitter at LGBTQ underscore review. You just look super casual. It just looks like you're leaning like... Hey. I am leaning. On a bucket. I'm saying I want you dead and I want your money.